Welcome to this series, which we call the Farmer Philosophy Series. And we're in a very, very special place. We're going to talk about where we are, obviously, in a second, with a very special person, Jeroen Klompe, which I've known for a number of years. And I couldn't imagine a better place and story and moment and person to start this, this journey with. This is an experiment. Uh, this might be the only one, hopefully not. Um, this is the first time we ever do video in, on this podcast or on this um, conversation series. So we're capturing it. Maybe you're watching this on YouTube or Vimeo or wherever we put it. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're just listening to it, which is perfectly fine as well. We try to be as visual as possible, but do know there is a video version which you can uh, look at. So join us in a journey where we're going to uh, explore. We're going to dig a bit deeper. We're going to uh, look where the story and the 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 conversation takes us today so welcome welcome to this very special place welcome Jeroen thank you so much for agreeing on another experiment because mm -hmm. we've done quite a few together yet and I mean we already started um, on the philosophy part but let's just very briefly because you hear sometimes some sounds in the background maybe some bubbling because we are in a place with a lot of other beings uh, that are definitely alive so where are we and where do we find ourselves here if you had to Describe a bit the background, which you can, of course, in the visual side, if you look at the video, you can see it. Yeah, where are we? <laughs> we are in a, uh, a storage facility located on our farm, which used to be a storage facility for uh, uh, potatoes and carrots and onions. Um, but we have uh, transformed it um, uh, last year into a barrel house, a barrel storage. And what's in these barrels? Because yeah. it's not potatoes, onions, or, or empty barrels. This is a very special, very special place. Yes, uh, this is a place, and we call it, we call them the ladies, and the ladies are our uh, uh, wooden barrels. And in the barrels, um, uh, soy sauce is fermenting for at least two years um, in the barrels. Yeah, we've done. I, I will definitely link them below. We've done an interview with. Uh, Bert on, on Tommaso and the soy sauce journey. There are many interesting stories online. You can find many videos, but it's a very fitting place because here the barrels rest, but are at work at the same time. And I think time there is, is if you look at your, your soy sauce bottle, the first ingredient is time. And, and it's very fitting that we have the time now to, to talk about it. We're at the end of the season. There's never an end of the season, but we're in, in November 2022. Everything slowed down just a bit never slows down a lot, but we have a bit of time to, to sit down and, and um, go a bit deeper into different moments. So what, what has been the season like this year? We're in 2022. I think you're going to say challenging, but what, what is uh, from looking at sort of at the end, looking back, what's, what's the first word that comes to mind? When you are in the barrels, it's like, like a, a Zen space. So things are popping up immediately in your head. And the first thing which is popping up in my head is um, that I'm proud. Um, and um, looking back at the year, it was um, a special year because of the uh, different weather conditions. And um, um, I'm super proud of the regenerative system we've built. Because the difference between the con conventional part and the regenerative part were huge this year. So that's uh, a rewardance for all the investment we have made in soil in soil improvement in the whole system we've built to build soil to grow plants and that people around us but also the the core team and everybody they are see it's 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 going to work it's yeah, just, really working just to give a bit of background we're here on a 360 hectare farm just south of rotterdam in the netherlands um, very intensive in terms of potatoes, onions, carrots, and soy and grain, obviously, to make this. And many fields have been in transition for a long time. Some fields have been in transition for short, or some fields you're just 
uh, renting or leasing for a year. Yeah. So you can see the differences. And if you had to describe to the audience, like what was the biggest surprise in those differences between like, let's say a more conventional extractively farmed or conventional field that you've been uh, farming for some of the owners compared to like the, the fields that have been on that transition for much longer, what was the biggest surprise? And that, what made you proud? Yeah, that, that the core is water holding capacity. So nothing about this carbon stuff that we've been talking about. Uh, the, 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 the water holding capacity was enormous this year. At the beginning, when you want to, to plant your uh, potatoes or sow your onion seeds, etc., we had a super uh, crumble structure with the right amount of moist to sow um, because the, 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 the cover crops, uh, they were mulched and they were um, fermented in a short period and they were storing or keeping or holding the water enormously. So the start of the season was good and it, it was becoming drier and drier and drier. And uh, yeah, you could see the difference in the development of the plants on the, the plant resilience, the healthy side of the plants. And yeah, during the season, you could see the difference in, hey, these plants are continuing with the production and these plants are a little bit hesitant uh, because of uh, worse root systems or because of a uh, less amount of water, etc. And that has resulted in, let's say, uh, to make it visual, uh, the, the, the most conventional uh, plots we have irrigated five or six times and the regenerative plots we haven't irrigated or one or two times. Which is massive. I mean, the fact that we already talk about irrigation in the Netherlands is a thing. I mean, that means climate is changing, weather is changing. And the fact, those differences, what, what, is this, what did this season taught you or what, what is the biggest lesson you, you learned if you look back now at, at this year, after many, many years, because you've done in, an incredible amount of experiments, you've been on this journey for a long time, but what is the biggest lesson from this year? That apart from the fact it works, it whatever it. Yeah, needs, but, but that that time and patience is your best friend. Looking at the barrels, yeah. But also in soil, if you have the patience to build it, it's going to give it back to you. Um, the plants, um, they uh, they thank you with a better crop, with a better skin structure, etc because you have invested in that, in time, in, in, the, in the possibility to rebalance nature in your soils. And when you say rebalance nature, what does that mean to you? Meaning that the balance between the most essential parts, um, nutrients, organic matter, um, biology, in and above the soil, biodiversity, frequency, energy, they are all working together in the system we have built, which is called regenerative farming at the moment. And you see in the most advanced plots that that dance or orchestra is starting to let's Work say, together. sing together or yes. tune together. Or yes. And is that a it's like an orchestra. Is that a linear thing? Like at some point, or is suddenly it starts and you're like, whoa, like that plot is, is start, like the balance is, is, or the orchestra starts to make proper music instead of just. Looking, looking back at, the, at, at all the years we are busy with it, the first years, you ask the questions to yourself. Am I doing it right? Because you are investing in it, um, but you see nothing. Or less, even you see more chaos, more. Yes, but 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 what I'm doing. But during the the season of the, during the years, it is improving, and you see a little bit more results. But it takes time, and then after three or four years, it's going to accelerate. And then year six, seven, and eight, holy shit, the system is going to work for itself, and you only have to maintain the system. And then the happiness is there. And do you, like, are you going now with those first plots into a space that is completely unknown to you as well? Like, how far can that go? Is that, or are you starting to go into, okay, we're, 
we always thought 10 was the max and now we're going to actually we're at 15 and we have no idea where it ends or are you still like in the in the comfortable space or are you going into into directions you 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 don't even know yet um we are in in the the comfortable space that we see how nature and soils are working we are in a discomfortable space that we are learning more every day and that we go in depth and that we are going to ask ourselves more questions what is happening how, how much do you let, let's say how much do you think you know now uh, a rough rough estimate That's a, I are think we at two percent, five percent, one percent? I think we are ten no, percent. No, no, I think we know. Fifty. Uh, I think what's happening. I know. I think we know twenty percent. Okay. And like, if I asked this question seven years ago, uh, we knew the wrong things. You thought so, you knew more, but you didn't. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it's a negative. So minus. So you have a big, big jump from minus twenty yeah. to twenty. And because we were learned and educated in the and in the wrong things. And what, what's the when you say wrong things? In the things we what is wrong? Yeah, what was it was not wrong. It was modified in those years because we were busy building that system, and everybody was convinced about that system. And that's the system of modern. Uh, farming, cost price driven farming, large scale farming, industrialized food systems, etc. And but that system has an end. And you saw that coming. I mean, I yes. remember the first time we met, and I think we said it in the interview we did as well, like you at some point saw those lines, like the, the, the yield was plateauing and the costs were going up. And that's very dangerous as a company and do you remember because that's one thing is okay how we're gonna increase yields and or decrease costs because otherwise we're this is not gonna end well but i think there's a much more philosophical layer underneath that because you keep saying and keep repeating over the last years you have to listen to nature you have to nature knows what it wants or what she wants and we have to listen and tune into that and follow that and what does the soil want, etc. But that is a huge shift from we farm and nature has to follow me or us and we just plant and, and the rest of it. Like, do you remember what triggered that? Like that realization that I'm not in full control, I will never be, and I'm part of nature instead of above nature. I feel like that's the fundamental shift many go through in this space but i'm also very curious because you started as a very conventional farm farmer on a very, very conventional farm it's not that you came to this realization and then bought a farm no you were farming and shifted that do you remember what started triggering that like oh there's much more and oh against nature we're probably gonna lose it or the battle yeah i think it's one of the biggest mirrors to open my eyes were our uh, travelings around the world together with my wife and family. Um, uh, for example, we thought that we had the best uh, soils in the world. We were uh, utopia in farming in the Netherlands. We had the best universities, we had the best machineries, we had the best soil. We, all, we were the best. That was the, 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 the conviction we had. We were convinced about it, but then during our visits, um, we always have the the the, the goal to, to find uh, local food growers, how they do it, how do they sell their products, etc. Local food markets, etc. And then we saw uh, maybe we have some problems also in the Netherlands with large scale farming. And I remember uh, a farm stay in uh, Nepal. Uh, where we were sleeping at a micro farm, which was growing all the crops and they were exchanging it with the neighbors, etc. And we were having conversations at, uh, at night during dinner 
super healthy uh, dinner with super tasteful uh, products. And I showed them pictures of what we were doing. And they were proud, not, obviously, like, look, look at my big tractors and, and my big fields and yeah. And she was not so good in the English conversations, but she said one thing super clear to me. And she said, too much iron. When I showed the pictures of the machineries working on our land, too much iron. And what was your response? Like, like were, were you able at that point to... No. Or were you like, no. what do you mean? Of course we have a lot of iron. Yeah, because... Steel we, has to drive. Yes, and we, we need to, to, feed the to, to work with the lowest cost prices in the world because we need to feed the people, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then, that was also the, the moment that my wife um, integrated more in, uh, in, in, in the whole farm. As a biologist, which we also interviewed. I'll put all of that below. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, yeah, if you want to have good soils, you, you have to need to have air and water and carbon and biology, all the things in your soil. And if you are honest, uh, yeah, we maybe have a problem with soil compaction. And uh, soil compaction leads to uh, a loss of carbon, leads to a loss of biodiversity, of biology, etc., etc. So soil compaction on the heavy clay soils was our problem because we had too much iron. So yeah. mm -hmm. um, the lady in Nepal, with one sentence, without having visited us, or maybe she will never, never visit us, she was totally right. And now you can walk on our soils and, and I ask um, many people, what are you feeling? And, and they say, oh, it's like we're walking on a, on a uh, trampoline. Yeah, trampoline or like a pillow that it's soft, it's breathing. That, uh, so that was the first trigger. I mean, of course, it triggered other thoughts already, but that whole compaction was, piece was... Like you could see that was dangerous and, and then, uh, then it started a whole journey on the machinery, on single lane farming. Right. And, and another, another eye opener was that I always wanted to have, let's say, a system like the wine estates in France, where they have... We the wait a few more years for climate change, we can actually start growing it here, but yeah. Um, they but, are. But a, location where there is terroir, where um, um, soil is uh, the basis of the grapes, where they process them. And you always wanted that here, because just no, no, to... No, no, to I, not, not, not here. I like the whole system that you are investing in your soils, that you are um, um, adding value to your products by processing it, that you have a connection to consumers, um, uh, that you have a story around your product, um, that you have a USP with your product, um, and that you have a community around you that people have, uh, that they, when they are in France, they wanted to visit and do, visit, do tastings, etc., uh, on wine estates. Let's say you're pretty far with the soy sauce, like yes. you're, you're getting there, but just to, how much of a stretch that is if you look around here where it's all extent ex very extractive potato carrots like there's no story there's no soil in many cases and it's all commodity commodity like that step to to talking about terroir and added value etc is a massive 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 leap very yeah. interesting and very needed to get out of the commodity system but it's not a, like your, your neighbors must have still, must have looked and still look very different at you or at the family here. Is that changing this year? Like these, do you feel like there's a, the neighbor over the fence, I mean, there are no fences here, but the neighbor over the fence looking at your fields and seeing differences or seeing all these weird people that show up on the farm and, and the fact that you have soy sauce, et cetera, is there, have you, do you feel like there's a, a different energy now in, on this island compared to a few years ago? 
Yeah, I like to add, just... We have time, the, so go the back changing to... moments, your yeah, time is our friend. If you look back on, on the moment you were going to follow your courses, your study, etc., etc., and sometimes you are doing things, and you, if you are looking back, then everything fits to each other. Um, and looking back from, I'm, uh, I will be 50 uh, um, next year, and I started when I was 20, for example. In, that, in those 30 years, a lot of things have happened, and, but they are all coming together. They have all had a reason. And sometimes you don't know when you're in the moment, what is the purpose for the, the, the later years. Um, but that is in my journey quite strong in the moment. That, uh, like, ah, that moment fits in now, yes. or that. Yes. What, and sometimes it, it looks a little bit like, like the river goes this way, but there is a red line in everything. And so what's another moment, apart from too much steel or too much iron, that triggered something? Hmm. Whatever bubbles up a few. And then we come back to the neighbors. I don't worry. Oh yeah, the 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 neighbors. Yeah, I definitely feel that that there is another energy uh, around us on the island. That people are getting a little bit more curious. What's happening? What are they doing, etc. Um, uh, because we live in a very conservative area. Um, yeah, if you do things in another way, mostly they will cut off your head. Um, and they see that there is an, an appetite to visit us in the circles a little bit more around uh, the island, um, international parties. Um, uh, you can see also that um, yeah, the more established uh, industries, etc., are asking questions at the moment. What are you doing? How are you doing it? And that's also uh, a rebalancing act for us that we can do uh, farm tours um, almost uh, two or three times a day, but yeah, is there a business model around all the things we have invested in time, in building a system, etc., which is working now, which has cost a lot of money. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's energy. Yeah. And we strongly feel that if you give good things, good things will come to you. But you can also spend all day, every day doing farm tours. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that's... Not profitable. No, it's a huge drain of time and has that to do with like this is a, a crazy year as well politically on the input sides on prices on inflation on do you feel like we're in an inflection point in terms of let's say that very input heavy industries are suffering everywhere including agriculture like if you if your input prices went two or three x up and you are we're already at the edge and the, let's say supermarkets are not paying more three times. Like, like, do you feel that there's a, an inflection point or is it still, it's okay to continue the, 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 the current path for many? Or are many in crisis and maybe looking at, at other ways or maybe taking things seriously that they it's, looked at a few years ago, like, oh, there's alternative inputs or, oh, this. It's, it's, it's depending if, the, if, if this, uh, inflation, extremely rise of, of uh, input uh, uh, costs is continuing, things need to be changed, otherwise the system will end. If this is uh, just a storm for one and a half year, things will get back uh, to normal as it was. So what do you hope? Um, I hope that the, 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 yeah, the whole system, like the, the, the big oil tanker, which is not steerable, is um, uh, uh, getting against the wall at at high speed. That's that's so that the, the crisis needs to become much more bigger before things are going to change, because um, the system wants to stay in the system because it's a very profitable system for the system yeah. for the system yes, and not for the farmers and not for the consumers because. There are two victims of this system, that's the consumer and the farmer who are paying the bill. And that's why I don't give energy at this moment uh, to, the, to the system. No, we are uh, giving energy to our own system, our own concept of 
soil processing and uh, marketing uh, that we can build a fully autonomous system based on soil. So basically creating a less dependent on the outside or yes. more, much more untouchable as, as yes. somebody in the podcast uh, called it uh, a few weeks ago yeah. and then from a position of strength and alternative yeah. like look yeah. there are other ways yeah. building that alternative engine or yeah. whatever system next to it independence power on the most extensive freedom. way is 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 the goal in 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 communicating with soil um, in, in the creativity around um, improvement of the system, about creativity of the products we are making based on fermentation, um, about everything. Do you see or do you feel that, I, I feel that most people don't talk about it enough or don't even think about it enough, that this is a power struggle as well. We've created a system that is completely dependent on outside forces yes. that are n not sharing our agenda. So let's put it politely. Yes, yes. And so this is a creating autonomy, creating independent, still connected systems, mm -hmm. but way less dependent on a single large input company that gets yeah. its ingredients from wherever and ever. And this is a power struggle. This yeah. is a, a, an independency, freedom struggle that any sector probably needs to go through, but farming especially. Do you have any of those conversations with your neighbors? No. No, no that's, that's, I have conversations with, with, with my most inner circle about, about this, uh, because it's, it's... Are they farmers? What is your most inner circle? Um, my most inner circle is, is my wife, my children, um, and... Uh, the the core team where who are building this whole system um, that's 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 the the core of the core and we are fully focused on um, uh, on improving this system that um, it will be perfect for us to be independent to create full autonomy starting with the soil um, starting with the seeds starting with the farming system, starting with the processing, and starting with the sales community. So it's from soil till bottle, from soil till end product, everything is in one hand. And do you think that scalable is a bad word here, but like, how would a vision look like for the like does every farmer need to do that or how would that work for on a larger scale or, or how would re that be repeated is that for um, can we expect every farmer or every farm company to go through that journey or is there going to be some kind of interdependence in terms of potentially processing and selling because otherwise you have to be a jack of all trades you have to be good at everything from the seed all the way up to to selling, which is no, rare and difficult. It's yeah, that that's that, that's true. Um, but the the whole f philosophy is there. Um, I strongly believe in a regener regenerative family or a regenerative business or um, a regenerative business model or a regenerative product, meaning that you are always busy by improving and reinventing yourself and then you become a better version of yourself and that can be your family your farm your soils etc and then you are create, creating a uniqueness um, and if you do that on the right way that there is demand for that uniqueness then everything is scalable so how do you scale uniqueness uh, that's uh, you have to find the formula for that mm -hmm. But if you, if you are um, a, a super tomato grower, growing excellent tomatoes or nutrient dense tomatoes, it's, it's about your focus point and there is a market for it, you can grow. Mm -hmm. And maybe you have to think a little bit more in, in let's say, units instead of big worldwide companies. Mm -hmm. 
because there's also scalability in 20 units, 20 that, units which can be a big unit. Which is how nature operates. Yes, it's, it's scalability in ecosystems. And repeatability almost. Yeah. But that clashes meaning, with our current. Meaning that the, 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 the ketchup of, uh, you make from those tomatoes, tomatoes is maybe of a different taste in Africa or in Southern Europe or in Canada. From your experience, the consumer, because you go all the way down to the bottle, in this case, maybe even the bottle of ketchup, are we, consumers is a bad word, like, are, are we ready for that role to accept that this barrel tastes different than that barrel? Or this bottle of tomato sauce, or tastes slightly different because it's a different year, etc., etc., or your beans taste slightly different? It's a mindset. Are we, eh? It's a mindset. Are we ready for that? I mean, you're, you're proving it. It's we a, are. It's, for it's, for it's, the soy sauce, we absolutely are. For wine, we, we've accepted that in a long time. For coffee, we're there as well, chocolate. I mean, but also for potatoes, also for quote unquote more boring things. Do you think there's a, an inherent like longing for the terroir as a consumer, as a, as, as a consumer, as a participant, as a, somebody that ends up eating? What, what you have produced. Yeah, but, but maybe the, the whole mind shift is going very slowly because also time is our friend and that people get a little bit more awake about what they are eating. Because a lot of people don't know exactly what they are eating with the result that we have created also a world um, uh, which is called the pharmacy uh, uh, at this moment, where we are earning a lot of money and spending a lot of money to medicines, etc., etc. So, if you see the the development of the insurance cost, health insurance cost, and if that's still a very steep line in the future, there is a economical way that people are going to get awake. Hey, are we good in what we are doing and that we are eating? And then maybe there is a, uh, an, an eye-opener for the people that say, maybe we have to find ways where we can find healthier or more tasteful food. Because if it's healthier, most of the time it's more tasteful. So have the hospitals and, and insurance companies, like health insurance companies, have they been on the farm? The hospitals, they have been on the farm. And what is their... Because now we're getting into the nutrient density part, soil health part. Like, how was that? Did you get like a, a bus of doctors, or, or what was the? We get the the the, the staff. Because we're back to the, the farm tours that you 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 have to turn into a business. The management point. of a, a big hospital um, in the Netherlands. Um, they were here to look at the beehives uh, as an interesting part around biodiversity. And we did uh, quite an open um, presentation, interaction about how I see what is the pharmacy of the future, which is soil. And it was a super interactive, interesting, in-depth discussion. Uh, it was a little bit like a U-turn discussion, where they came to the conclusion that the system we are building at the moment, which is called nature, we are not building it, we are... Facilitating. Yes. Um, and that they have lost it also. So economy has lost ecology, but um, uh, the hospitals has also lost ecology, ecology uh, or the nature and the natural um, um, power to get more healthier. Uh, so I gave them some results of uh, studies of uh, 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 researchers in relationship to the recovery after a long surgery, which, is, which are quite impressive figures. So I asked, as a conclusion, when can we start a collaboration between hey, the farmer and the hospital? Can I bring? How many potatoes do you need? Yeah. Yes. 
Ooh, 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 ooh. And the conclusion was that they didn't have a kitchen anymore in the hospital. Outsourced they already had a everything. pharmacy. They had outsourced it in a five year tender uh, <laughs> that, yeah, people need to have food, but yeah. If it comes in a box, it's also fine. Yeah. We have to heat it up and that's it. But that's the system we have created where money was dominant because everything is about cost price and earning money. And so when will that moment, I mean, it's impossible to predict, but when those costs, it's the same cost curves that you've seen on a smaller scale on the farm, obviously, like inputs going up, yield is going plateau, plateauing or going down. The same we see with our health input costs are, the costs are going up and the outcome is getting worse, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the wall there? Like, what, how is that super tanker going to hit some resistance at some point? Or we're just going to add, I just got the, the, my, new, uh, my new insurance bill for next year, and of course it augmented quite a bit. Like, when is somebody going to say, okay, this is just, or does this get way worse that we, I don't know, spent? 30, 40, 50 percent of our, our total budget on, on healthcare before we get awake? Or what do you see there? Because it seems like health is sort of the, I mean, water holding capacity is the most important thing, but health seems to be the entry point for the rest of society to get on board with this. But if the current system is insurance, 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 and hospital, 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 and we outsource our food production, what do you see there as a are we close to an inflection point there, or are we still quite far away? Because they are super we're enthusiastic, not, not, and then they say, yeah, but we outsourced our food for five years, so yeah. come back in five. Yeah, I think um, we are not there yet, uh, um, reflecting to the enormous high energy prices at the moment, um, um, where people have to pay three times the, 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 the same amount of money for the same amount of energy or gas. And there is not still um, uh, strikes and 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 and, and um, uh, public uh, disobedience or whether, what is it yeah. called uh, demonstrations, demonstrations again. Uh, for those energy prices. Yeah, there is a little bit buzz in the in the media, but it's not there yet. It's not bad enough yet. Not bad enough yet. You would expect three times. I've seen seven times as yeah. well in some places. And we are still continuing. To with pay. All, yes. <laughs> So, uh, so it's it's. So just keep building on your on the alternative system, keep grinding away, not plowing, but keep keep building yeah, but and that, building that, and building and building. The conclusion is the pain is not painful enough yet. So is that the mission we have now? to keep building until the pain gets enough in the different systems for a bigger shift, like a 10% shift or 15 or whatever the tipping points. I mean, there's a lot of research into that, but is that what we can do or can we, you know, we cannot increase the pain that would be. I, ha I think we have to, uh, to have the faith and the trust that things are going to change. If that's in two, three, or five years, that's not, a, or maybe it takes a generation. What gives you the trust? Um, the, 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 there's trust in our system because we get the rewardance that we're do, doing good things that gives you trust. And that there are people who want to buy your stuff, uh, which is paying the bills. That gives you trust also. So there is a, a, a growing appetite of people who are reaching out to us, hey, we have heard about you. Um, we have heard good things about you. Uh, we have heard that you are um, building soils, etc., etc. So, yeah, what gives us trust that the amount of people who are entering into our energy uh, at this moment is growing. That gives us trust. And hope. Um, it gives us trust that people who are, that the, the people are leaving the farm or the brewery or whatever, that they that they are touched in their heart, that they get emotional, that they say, hey, stop, it's too much at the moment. 
this is, this is really mind-blowing what you're doing. And it's starting small, it's like putting a stone in the water, it's like a metaphor, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's how it works. Are you hopeful? Sorry? Are you hopeful? Uh, it's a question I, I keep, I, the last few episodes, sometimes it comes up. Are you, from what you see outside, from what you emerge literally in nature, you say you keep talking about trust, but are you also hopeful? Yeah. Yeah. But not giving too much attention to the outside world at the moment, not giving too much attention to uh, all the media at the moment. Focus on what we are doing and um, we get more questions. How, 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 how? Yeah, but we don't know how everything works, but that means us that we want to go more in depth also. Does this journey make you humble as well? Like there are so many questions on the fields, on, on everything. Yeah, but if you're doing it together, uh, then it's not so complicated because you can... Together meaning with your team, together with, with nature. The, with or? the team, with, the, with nature also. Um, but then um, there al there's, there's always a priority in question, questions. And if you just prioritize them, you can say, oh, let's really focus on that question. That, uh, um, and if you go to your fields and you are in your fields, uh, there's always one big thing popping up, which is important at this moment. The plants and the soils are always telling you, this is the important thing. So you walk in your fields, you try to get into your Zen space and it tells you what needs to be done. Yes. So when you're overwhelmed, when you're completely, your phone is ringing nonstop, I don't know how many messages, etc. You go into your field, or one of the fields. Yeah, but you have to do to, to, to tune in. You, you cannot do this from the tractor. I'm no, you have to, to tune walk. in into your crop, into your barrels, into your. Pr and when you tune tune in, there's always the most important thing to do at the moment. And it's if, always correct. Like what comes up at that point. If you if you wake up in the morning, there's always if you listen carefully, there's always one important thing which needs to be done today. And what if you wake up and you're completely overwhelmed with to-do lists, emails, etc.? What, what, what do you do when... Do those days happen or you are yes. usually wake up no. relatively zen? No, absolutely not. Um, but that, it's, it's, a, it's, it's getting back to the essence after a very busy period. And... If you listen carefully to your body, your body is telling you, hey, you are totally dis disattracted from the core things because you are being busy with your action lists, with deadlines, etc., etc., etc. All the things need to be done, blah, 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 blah. Get back to the silence first, and then all the beautiful things are popping up. Most of the time, Sunday mornings, I go walking in, in, in nature, etc., a lot of answers to questions are popping up. Is that your meditation? Do you meditate? Yes, we do. How fundamental is that? Um, it's extremely fundamental, but when it's busy, you say, oh, not today. Oh, let's wake up one half hour, a half hour earlier because I need to do that and that. I need to be in Amsterdam at nine o'clock. Oh, you forget it. That, uh, so that's, that's the thing. That's do you the, notice then if you don't do that for... If you're honest to yourself, you notice it. Yeah. If you don't... You get hit at some yeah. point. And has that ability to sense or listen or even understand the language of a field changed over the last years? Like, yes. Do you get better is not the right word. Do you get more in tune, yes. more able to, to listen, more able to translate what it's saying? And what is it? I mean, for somebody that doesn't walk fields very, I mean, I walk them, but not my fields every day, etc. What? How would you describe that feeling? Like, um, this field needs this. Like how? Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying how does it tell you, but how this, does it feel? Like after this, this, this conversation, we are going out um, with a ecologist 
to our fields and we are going to, to dig uh, holes and to see what the roots of the cover crops are telling us. Not the above ground uh, uh, biomass, no. what are the roots telling us? And did you, you and, see and you, that by smelling, by seeing, by, by touching? By seeing, by structure, you're seeing by the depth of the roots, by the thickness of the roots, by the color of the roots, by the diversity of the roots, uh, uh, by everything. And by now you have seen so many roots that you immediately see, okay, good, yes. okay-ish, or yes. it needs yes. X, Y, Z. Can we see the, 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 the big soil animals? We cannot see bacteria and fungi. We go in depth into to bacteria and fungi um, uh, this winter. Um, but what, what is life telling you? Because people, they have an attitude, uh, a nonverbal uh, communication. Plants have also, soils have also. And what are the big differences like on a conventional plot compared to the ones that have been on a, a journey for a long time. When you dig that hole and you see the cover crops, what's, if you're busy on the, what's field, the story? What's no, the story? There, there is a simple um, comparison that if you have a, uh, let's say, a conventional uh, plot without a lot of soil health, a lot of biology, and you are working on that field, it's quiet. Literally quiet. Yes. And if you are going to work on a field where the biology is much, much better, when there is much more soil life, within 20 minutes, the birds are there and you haven't called them, you haven't sent them a message to reward you that they have beautiful worms or something like that. That's how the system works. You're not sending a message but they instinctively know, hey, this is good shit. This is a good lunch, yeah. And they are there, out of nothing. Ah, they were following you, probably. <laughs> they know, they get the message. And I mean, some regenerative farmers or farmers that are, have been farming regeneratively would say it's, it's a lot more fun as well, a lot more complex and complicated and there are endless questions, etc. Would you describe this way of living and way of farming, but it comes from a way of living as well, as much more enjoyable and more fun? Definitely, definitely. There, there's no doubt, but it's, it's, it's real fun. Um, 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 we are super grateful about what's happening. Um, uh, we, what I said also that we are proud. On the other hand, it's becoming uh, more difficult, way more difficult, because um, you can destroy the things you've built so quickly, because it's such a vulnerable, uh, let's say, let's say, an, 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 um, fragile, fragile system uh, that you can destroy it uh, with entering it on wet conditions or wrong conditioning conditions, or with uh, wrong. Uh, air pressure in your tires, etc., etc. So, the you have to to be super careful of what you're doing and ask. And I'm asking the team it every day. What we are going to do now is that improving soil or helping the plants? Yes or no? Does it make it more scary as well? It's not scary. It's it's being in the moment of what you're doing. And sometimes you have to, do, to make an intervention which is not super good for the soil because yeah, um, the weather forecast is not so good and we want to harvest, yes, but then it's an, a total clear decision that we are going to enter this field now and that we accept that the soil quality is going to be down a little bit. But what's the next step to improve it again? Um, so yes, it's in, uh, more enjoyable. Yes, it's becoming from the, 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 the amateur league to the Champions League in farming. Do you really see that? Like yeah. this is the, the absolute cutting edge of, of farming is, is this space. And there are not so many globally. Not yet. That you can compare notes with, or at least no. share notes. The beautiful thing is that the whole community of 
of Rigi and egg farmers is extremely open towards each other. Extremely. Much more than conventional farmers? Yeah, that they find, them in a that they find each other in a very natural way. Um, there was a guy on the farm uh, working for a big consultancy company. Uh, I, I, I know who you mean. I told him uh, that I was planning a an, an, an vacation in, uh, in South Africa. And that's the right person to talk to. Yeah. Immediately, four uh, uh, emails popped up uh, uh, on a Sunday morning with um, introductions to regenerative farmers in South Africa. Um, I wrote them an email back and Bob, yes, you're welcome. Let's have a good conversation about Regen Egg. I will show you everything, etc. Totally open. That's amazing. It's, yeah, and this, this one guy was making vinegar and this, that guy was uh, managing um, uh, 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 500 cows on a very regenerative way. But it's all about the system and, and getting the business model fit around Regen Egg. That's the game. Staying, staying in business and yeah. staying alive. Wow. The big system starts to slowly shift. Yeah. Staying in the game, basically. Yeah. Staying in the game by having connection to a end consumer. And because you've tried it many times also in this whole short value chains and etc. And but the moment it was wasn't, not there. It wasn't so successful. No, it was not successful. It was not there. But looking back that it was an enormous hard learning curve. Uh, at this scale, it's not that you can go to a farmer's market. That's no, you need you need a lot of bags of beans, potatoes, yes. etc. But it was a real hard learning curve, and and if you look back, uh, are you happy you did it at that point? Because you invested in companies as well. You have set up a number of ones here in, in, in looking, Rotterdam, and, and then looking back, it was all worth it. Uh, but it has it has forced us to come to the real essence of farming making products and connecting to the consumer. And my wife is always telling it, um, if you hit the bottom of the swimming pool, you can jump enormously fast of high or powerful. Which is a funny metaphor. We use it in, in impact investing and tonic as well. Like, but then on another side, like the swimming pool where you're in the deeper end of the pool where you don't feel the bottom, because that's the, the scary bit. But that's also the interesting piece because if you can feel the bottom, yeah. of course you can jump, um, but you can you still are in the safe space. And it feels like here, and many other farmers are exploring pieces and ways of creating life, literally, and, and trying to create a system which improves over time and harvest enough to keep the system, pay for the system. It's a task we, which is an enormous task, enormous balancing act between entering that field because you have to harvest and you know you're gonna push back soil health a bit and like taking that decision day in, day out is something I don't think most people yep. understand. Um, what we're always saying is that we, we're not going to claim things. Um, we always say uh, a chance for everybody is not a chance. So you have to reinvent yourself And then there are, let's say, examples how it could be done. So it's much more of a personal if you want journey. To, yes. For a farmer, for a If you want to be very successful in, in regenerative farming, you have to change your mindset first. And I would argue in any sector. Because what you're learning here that's part of the series as well. It's applicable to health, probably living, education, mobility, whatever other sector we can... Education, very interesting case. <laughs> How many other hours do we have? Yeah, yeah but... <laughs> Time is our friend. Yeah, but very interesting case. What makes you say is, that? Education is, is a, a, a big thing in Regenec at this moment. Um, and we have experiences, experienced quite an, uh, <coughs> an intensive uh, 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 example with our son. He was in, let's say, old school 
education, farming. Um, but growing up on a regenerated farm and yeah, yeah, that was clashing. Uh, it was like, yeah, there was one uh, institute pulling on, on one leg. Yeah, you have to learn and to do what was old school and you have those, you have to give those answers in your exams. And there was the situation at home who was pulling on the other leg. Um, uh, let's say, yeah, we do it on a different way. So he was always discussing it with, with his professors, with his teachers. Should I answer this question the way you want yes. me to answer or the way I know it should yes. be? Yeah. Which has resulted that um, uh, he was totally not happy anymore with the existing uh, uh, school system uh, and that he quit at school. And, but now we are in the situation that he's learning it on a total different way. Um, he's, he's going to do internships, etc., etc. Um, he's going to do some courses. Um, I take him with him to colleagues which are farming re regenerative. We go on. So you have to basically build the school yourself. So education. On top of all the other yes, things. Yes, it's, 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 uh, the regenerative school is not there yet. Um, uh, but that has a result that he doesn't have the right diplomas at this moment in the existing system. Which is a very uh, strange situation because I'm 100% convinced that he will be super successful in the things he likes to do. But you need the. Uh, which I think many parents recognize from struggles with the traditional school system in general and alternative schools, etc., that you still at the end need some kind of paper while you are prepared for life way better than many other school systems do. And in ag, it's exactly the same. Like the reality of a place where we're now is way ahead of any farming school or any farming university yeah. or any applied university you can get. So what do you do? Yeah. Do you go there and struggle for four years and fill out the answers they want to hear while you know that the rest of the world has moved on or not, but then you don't have the paper. So now he's not going to have the paper. Is no. that an issue? Because I know like in, in, in no, France, no, no. you need to be an official farmer and went to farming school before you can actually it's are allowed not, to farm. It's, it's not an, an, an issue, but the system has made it an issue. Mm -hmm. So you're going to start a farm, an official farming, region farming school? Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no we're focusing on those things and... and, and, and uh, um, Yes, we invest in, in soil, in barrels and knowledge. That are the, the three mantras we have. Um, but the, the business model of knowledge is not there yet. <laughs> but, uh, Maybe start with farm tours and then slowly build up. And it's, a big, it's a big one. And so as we're slowly winding down this interview, I mean, time is our friend, but at some point it's done. As we're getting closer to the end of the year, the, the days are getting darker and or we're getting closer to the shortest day. It's also a time to to think and reflect as we've done to to this year. But what are you excited about for the next year? Like what's the most exciting piece now? If you can share, obviously, whatever is not top secret, because there are some pieces of this farm that are um, on this journey. What excites you the most? If you had to pick one thing now, like oh, the next, maybe not even next year, but like I know it's coming, we're working on something or we're going to work at some point on X, Y, Z. And it's just really, really exciting. What are you looking forward to the most? I look forward the most thing to making the next step in perfectionism of the holistic regenerative farming system. Meaning there is space for improvement for the biofertilizers. There is space for improvement of our own seeds. There is space to improvement for the inoculants. There is space to improvement for the cover crop mixes. There is space to improvement um, for our soil biology development. There is space to improvement for the quantum farming part. So lots of possibilities. Incremental. Yes, but what I learned is that you not focusing on one thing, focus on the system. So that meaning that you have to improve all the parts of the system a little bit to get the whole system on a higher level. So you're saying I'm not missing one piece. It would be amazing to have 
X, Y, Z, but I want to improve every single one piece yes. by piece because I know the system will start to keep coming back to the orchestra yeah. uh, metaphor, yes. singing yes. better or, or yes. playing music better. We started with an orchestra and every single thing in the orchestra, every single instrument of the orchestra needs to be fine-tuned. And because are you adding other pieces to the orchestra? Are there pieces you feel missing? Like we're not working on, on this yet, but it would be really, if I had unlimited time and resources, I would also start working on this because it feels like a missing instrument in, in the orchestra at the moment. Or are you saying, actually, we have a, quite a nice mix and we have to keep improving the quality of the, and how they sing together? I think the, I think the, the, the recipe um, for the mix of our regenerative system is ready. But there is a way to improve the ingredients of the recipe and maybe we are uh, going to change some cooking te techniques to create the right three Michelin star dish in regenerative farming. Not talking about products, but talking about the growing system in the plants and the soil. And do you feel confident enough to, let's say the neighbor calls or whatever on this island and says, I have a hundred hectares, please do quote unquote it like start applying it here. Relatively similar soils, of course, relatively similar climate. I'm not saying somebody in the East that calls or, or someone in Germany, etc., which is very different. Do you feel confident enough, like, okay, we can start kickstarting the journey, maybe go faster than the seven years, or do you, do you feel yeah, yeah, confident, can, or you say, no, Ooh, let's no, first experiment no, 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 a lot no, we more are, now? We are fully confident about that. It can go faster than we have done it. Of course. Um, because we have, we've paid the price for failures. Um, and um, are those questions coming? Yes, they are. Are people are knocking on the yeah, door and saying, yeah, they are. They help are us. Help us. And yeah, the, 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 we are looking for the model. How are we going to do that? And how are we going to reward ourselves? And um, yeah, there is a, a, a business model in, in soil improvement. That's for sure. So can we be paid for the soil improvement service as it is as a very simple thing? And if you had to choose, what would you want to, what would you want to be your, I mean, very non-philosophical KPI? Like, what do you want to be paid for? Is it water holding capacity? If you had to pick one thing and said, okay, if we get it from this to that, you pay me. If yeah, we, we don't, well, what's your, what would you naturally go to if, if it's not one thing? That's, that's the thing. Like, how do you? So, how would you be paid then? Like, what's our, what are good indicators that you've done your job in case you? It's 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 the whole soil health. Index, indicator, yeah. which is uh, um, divided into different KPIs, let's say what holder capacity, biodiversity in and above the soil, um, the physical structure of the soil, the chemical structure, of, all those things are together compared in one figure which is called the soil health index, which need to be improved. That's, that's the parameter we're talking about and then you are increasing the internal, internal values of soils, which are an indicator for the external value of soil. It should be. It should be, yeah. That's a whole different subject yeah. on land ownership and, and connection of prices here. Do you see any changes before we open a complete rabbit hole again? Like in the Netherlands or in Western Europe, we have often hear that prices are very high and not necessarily connected to, let's say, the underlying health indicators of the soil. Is there more discussion about that? Like how to bring them back into balance also there? like. Prices land pieces are being sold for are not connected to if, what if, if you the, see you can do on it. it, it for me, it's a, a insurance um, in the biggest asset you have, soil, soil capital. Um, and when the market is going down fast because we are not earning money anymore or for because of our external circumstances, etc., I'm 100% convinced that the top soils will keep their values. The best soils, yeah. The best soils. With the best tops. There's always demand for the best soils. Mm -hmm. So even if you're very cynical on a lot of things, it's, it's an insurance policy to have healthy soils and all the other benefits. And you don't want to destroy it anymore because your, your business models are based on your soil health. Mm -hmm. So the, the what if question is asked a lot of time. What if, yeah, but a farmer never wants to destroy his system where he's, where he's that's that's the the basis of life of of 
of the whole income stream of him. He doesn't want to destroy that. And yet, why, do, why should you destroy your lifeline? Mm -hmm. we all created a system that re rewarded that or only asked one yield question yeah and that was it i think it's a a good place to end and i want to thank you so much for first of all allowing us to film here mm -hmm. taking the time and creating the space for for this conversation and for the journey we've been on over the last years yeah and we will we will keep on with that journey we're not ready yet um, Will you ever be ready? What, what is ready? Uh, ready is that um, we're sitting uh, on a couch watching over regenerative fields. Mm -hmm. um, um, I will never retire, but I will... Uh, uh, hopefully there's more time in, 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 in the month for doing other things than the things we're doing now. Um, but that, that we are super proud of the whole system at scale we have built uh, based on just soil improvements and integrating nature in the whole farming system. I think even more than integrating nature, like really, let's say dancing with or following or facilitating. And, but you started this whole conversation, it's a nice circle actually, that you are very, very proud of this year. So maybe you are I mean, there's no, uh, there, there's a bench, down, bench downstairs, but there's a bench to sit on and look at on the fields, even in a November day where yeah, and it's grey and yeah. it's, uh, but still look proud of what yeah, but has shifted or has. Fifteen years ago, everything was grey and brown and everything was ploughed. Now we're sitting on that bench and there's life everywhere. There is the whole farm is full with cover crops. The the, the whole farm is full with life. In November, in December, in January, the birds are there, the flowers are still there. So imagine in 15 years. And, and we've planted trees and we are going to plant hedges now and, and all those things. Yeah, I don't think it's the last time we... No, because I, I, I was reading a study of a Japanese professor. What the function is of birds early in the morning when they are whistling, mm -hmm. it's to open a very biological term in the leaves that photosynthetic photosynthesis will start that day. So the birds trigger with their tone the photosynthesis. So without the birds, there's less or... And if you want to have birds, you have to have trees and hedges, etc. Because otherwise they don't come. It's so super logical. So simple. It's it's really simple. It's very complex, but it's very simple. Yeah, but there is a famous uh, 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 football trainer who always says, "If you can see it, then you understand it." Or, or the other way around, doesn't matter. But I think with that quote, I think it's Kaif. No? Yeah. yeah. Once you see it, you cannot unsee it. I think in Je in region, like, it's definitely yeah. definitely the case. I think with that we. We wrap up. Yeah, we can cool. talk another four hours, but time is our friend and ending this conversation now. So thank you so much Super. for allowing us to take the time. Thank you. Cool. Brilliant. That's a wrap. <laughs> thank you so much for watching till the end. And I hope you enjoyed this first episode, first filmed episode of the, the conversation series of the podcast as well. And I really, really enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below, reach out uh, through the website, through our social media, etc. What do you think, what we can improve, who we should interview next. And I absolutely hope to see you, to hear you obviously, um, at the next one, because this is something that I hope we'll be doing more often to have the time to go deep with the absolute regenerative pioneers of the era we live in so thank you so much for watching listening wherever you are get in touch if you have feedback ideas etc and see you at the next one mm -hmm.